Modok is possibly the strangest character ever created by the folks at Marvel. An evil giant head with arms and legs, Modok is bent on taking over the world, and he's also incredibly goofy. So will we ever see him battling the Avengers in a Marvel movie? Well, let's find out. Originally created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, Modok first appeared in 1967's Tales of Suspense No. 94 as a foe for Captain America. At his core, he's exactly what his name says he is, a mobile organism designed only for killing. As for his origin, George Tarleton had signed up to work for the acronym-loving science terrorist of Advanced Idea Mechanics, only to find out that he was the dumbest guy in the room. Admittedly, there's a significant chance of that happening when the room is otherwise full of mad scientists, but George had the opportunity to get a little smarter by letting AIM experiment on him. The original intent was to turn him into MODOK with a C instead of a K, the mobile organism designed only for computing, whose genetically augmented brain could help AIM with data processing. Unfortunately, he became way more aggressive than they'd anticipated, which earned him a more accurate acronym and took the position of Scientist Supreme. In the process, George was physically transformed, with his head growing so massive that his body could no longer support it, requiring a floating rocket chair to move. The trade-off, though, came in the form of mental superpowers. Modok will have power beyond anything man has ever seen. His very mind is a weapon. Over the next few decades, Modok would be a perennial foe in the Marvel Universe, with AIM becoming a sort of utility player supervillain organization that could reasonably go up against almost any hero. A group that's entirely devoted to mad science for the sake of mad science, directed by the incomprehensible whims of a giant floating head, can show up pretty much anywhere. Through it all, MODOK was at the center of AIM's advanced ideological machinations. MODOK CONTROLS AIM NOW AND FOREVER! A few of his most memorable exploits during this period involved creating a giant robot body that was properly proportionate to his own giant head so that he could fight the Hulk. A plan with so many problems that you really start to understand why computing wasn't really his forte. He also once teamed up with the Headmen, a group of D-list villains united by the fact that they all had weird heads, in an attempt to take over the world. That's the kind of story that MODOK was winding up in, and it would only get weirder from there. The life of a MODOK is a lonely one. When one is designed only for killing, can they ever truly know love? If MODOK's past is anything to go by, the answer is a resounding no, but that's never stopped him from trying to create some kind of mutually attracted technological entity to ease those lonely nights of plotting world domination. The first attempt at a mate came when S.H.I.E.L.D. scientist Kate Waynesboro was transformed into the imaginatively named Miss MODOK. She didn't last long, turning against her creators and eventually stumbling into some kind of reverse MODOKifying machine that undid her transformation. The second was slightly more successful, by a set of very specific standards for success. A woman who was originally thought to be Hank Pym's dead first wife, Maria, underwent a similar procedure to George Tarleton. The difference was that it only caused her brain to balloon to the size of a small zeppelin and not the rest of her head. Since she wasn't mobile, she was initially designated a specialized organism designed for aggressive maneuvers, or SODAM. Eventually, though, she finished a complete MODOKification, and having been granted her own rocket chair, she became MODAM. Perhaps surprisingly, MODAM and MODOK never really hit it off. As you might be able to tell already, MODOK found his way into some of the Marvel Universe's weirder stories. In fact, he would eventually come to be a symbol of the weirder side of Marvel himself. Maybe it was the purple and orange design that made MODOK look like a malevolent Easter egg. Maybe it was the innate hilarity of the phrase, designed only for killing. Maybe it was that he sometimes seemed like the one villain who was allowed to be incredibly silly while still being presented as a deadly mastermind. Whatever the reason, he went far beyond your average weirdo villain and became a true cult favorite, inspiring fanzines like the pseudo-scholarly Journal of MODOK Studies and occasionally wrangling his way into a starring role. With all that in mind, what are the chances that he'll show up in a Marvel movie someday? Well, they're probably better than you think. MODOK has never really been the go-to villain outside of the comics, but that hasn't stopped him from making a handful of appearances in slightly more mainstream media. He's appeared on a lot of the Marvel animated shows, albeit with some notable changes, starting back in the 90s with the Iron Man cartoon that made up half of the Marvel Action Hour. Aside from changing the K in his name to stand for Conquest, the big difference there was in size. Rather than just being a gigantic head perched precariously on top of a comparatively tiny body, he was shrunk down with the end result being that he was about as big as your standard issue toddler with the head the size of a basketball. Why they changed it remains a mystery, but given that the shows of the era were heavily tied into toy lines, it might have been that a slightly smaller sized MODOK was easier to make as an action figure that could fit on the same size card as the rest of the line. 
Regardless of the reasons, it gave us a very memorable scene of a genocidal supervillain going undercover and being pushed around in a baby carriage. It's as you feared. They know. I fear nothing, Hypnosha. Beyond that, MODOK's most surprising appearance probably came in the world of video games, when he was added to the roster of Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Fate of Two Worlds, as a playable character. You might think that being a giant, easily targeted head with comparably tiny arms and legs would put him at a distinct disadvantage in a game about punching people in the face, but it seems like he's a mental organism designed only for KOs. Out of all MODOK's various media appearances, the strangest might be the one where we find out he already technically exists in the MCU. Okay, when we say that MODOK is technically already part of the MCU, the word technically is doing a significant amount of heavy lifting. He has indeed made an appearance in an official installment to the MCU, but it's not one that most moviegoers would know about. He's in Iron Man 3, the official game. To be fair, the video games are dubious at best when it comes to tying into the actual MCU. After all, the games aren't so much contradicted by the movies as they are completely ignored by them, but they do give a few underrated characters a chance to get a little closer to the MCU than they would have otherwise. The Captain America tie-in games, for instance, have some really great deep cuts, like Diamondback and the militant anarchist forces of Ultimatum. As for MODOK, the version that shows up in the game has an interesting twist to him. Instead of George Tarleton, this version of MODOK is Aldrich Killian, the mastermind behind Extremis, who dies at the end of the movie. Apparently, he had a contingency plan which involved backing up his brain and then becoming a MODOK to get his revenge. However, the biggest factor working against MODOK's chances for showing up in a film is that he's actually getting his own TV show. It's an animated sitcom starring Patton Oswalt in the title role, and it will focus on MODOK's home life with his wife and kids as he faces a midlife crisis. No, really, that's happening. It'll be on Hulu later in 2020. The setup of the show is that after failing to conquer the world despite many, many attempts, MODOK has lost control of AIM. Facing a forced early retirement, he now finds himself without a purpose in life because, you know, he's literally designed to do one thing. In addition to Oswald, the show's cast should be pretty familiar to fans of TV comedy. Amy Garcia, whose previous comic book-themed credits include playing crime scene investigator Ella Lopez on Lucifer, will be playing MODOK's wife Jody, who runs a mommy blog. Their two kids, high school senior Melissa and tween Lou, will be voiced by Melissa Fumero of Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Ben Schwartz, who may be best known for his role on Parks and Recreation. Originally, MODOK was set to be part of its own bizarre shared universe of animated shows, alongside fellow Marvel Universe oddballs Hitmonkey, Howard the Duck, and Tigra and Dazzler as the offenders. The deal wound up falling through, but MODOK will continue on regardless. All right, let's say that Marvel Studios does in fact want to work MODOK into their universe, but they don't want to use him as a villain. Maybe they're worried that having a bad guy with a giant head fighting a superhero was the one singular fatal flaw that turned audiences off of the Green Lantern movie. So how do they bring him in? As always, the comics have provided an answer. As the success of Suicide Squad proved, audiences can get behind a high story about a bunch of misfit supervillains. If they're looking to do their own villain-centric action comedy romp, then the MCU movies could do a lot worse than lifting the plot of supervillain team-up MODOX-11. As you might expect from the title, MODOX-11 involves MODOK putting together a team of C-list villains for a job that involves stealing a massive, potentially catastrophic power source called the Hypernova. None of the other characters involved have been in the films, but the basic idea of reuniting the MCU's surviving villains under MODOK's commanding cranium could make for a super fun movie. It could be the perfect vehicle to bring back minor characters like Backtrack or the baddies who've been on ice due to a lack of sequels like The Abomination. Let's say Marvel Studios wants to go a different way and fully embrace all the weirdness that comes along with a rocket-propelled giant head that wants to take over the world with his brain powers. There's a comic they could draw on for that, too, and it might just be the single greatest MODOK appearance of all time. It happened in the pages of the kid-friendly Marvel Adventures The Avengers No. 9. The premise of the story is simple. When the Avengers raid AIM's headquarters, MODOK uses his brain powers to lure them into a chamber that turns them all into MODOKs. The problem is that there's still the Avengers, so they break out in their own rocket-powered hover chairs and continue doing Avenger things. The funniest part is that while they carry on being superheroes, the public is completely weirded out by it, and everyone reacts with less cheering and more with just quietly being disturbed. Eventually, Wolverine's mutant power counteracts the MODOK transformation, and he's able to reverse it for the rest of the team before they decide to take over the world to run it more efficiently. Let's be honest, this doesn't seem likely to make it into a live-action MCU project, but consider the following. 
Given how eager they were to finally move on from their rigorous, time-consuming Marvel roles, having Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. come back to voice computer-animated MODOK versions of themselves might be the only possible way to get those guys back for another MCU appearance. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite comic characters are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.